We are at Upton Boxing Center on Pennsylvania and Robert. I've been involved with Upton for almost 12 years now. Ash has told us about this building. He wanted to move us from the east side to the west sides, and that's how Upton came about. Come on into the main gym. Right here, this is our main gym where all the boxers and stuff train at. Um, we have Coach Mac right here working with one of our boxers right here. He's one of our main condition coaches here. Actually, he's training for a fight himself coming up. And this is Upton Boxing Center right here. Home of champions. Well, Who's the Man was like an outcoming party for Javante Davis for all the years he's been training at this gym from the age of seven all the way up to the age of 18. My name is Javante Davis, and we at, and we at Upton Boxing Center. Just to separate myself from my family for a long period of time. Eat, eat in the right way, you know, that's working hard. How much love I have for the sport is all my heart. I love the sport with all my heart. I got involved with boxing when I was, I was eight years old. And I, and I used to um, street fight a lot um, in the streets and at school. Junior Olympics. First time, Mr. Devontae Davis. Say something to the camera, my sir. My man. What? What do you do with it? I do it, I do it for the love of the sport, but also I do it for the money, because without the money then I'd be doing it for nothing. How hard do they have to work at this sport? Very hard. Probably 24 hours. Man. You probably start with 24 hours, man, and you slack up man, as you as you keep going. The game plan was just, just to stay focused and stay hungry and humble. Each one of them had did remarkable things in their boxing amateur career. Like Javante Davis, he won over 40 um, national championships. Lorenzo, he is 46 and one. <laughs> Lorenzo Chuck You won the 2011. National Silver Gloves Tournament of Champions. Talk about winning those titles and what they meant for you as an amateur. It put me at the number one spot in the USA. And it helped me better as a person too. Don't you know, the gym was a refuge for both fighters and most of the kids in the area. There's no substitute for hard work. I remember one time, I couldn't make weight. Had to be here like five o'clock in the morning, training. Running on the treadmill, but I just couldn't quit. Look around now, today you see them, they coming to the gym working hard. After working, coming from school, and doing their normal life, they coming in the gym and working hard. I don't have to actually tell him everything to do because he's going to work on what I want him to work on, you know? So them little characters that I look for, if I see him in here working on his craft, trying to make himself better than what he supposed to be, that means he, care about what, he cares about what he's doing. Talk a little bit about trainer Calvin Ford and his commitment to the young people at Upton Gym. Yeah, he a gut coach. He like a father for real. He helped with outside of boxing and like whatever you want to do. So Scout, that's like that's like a dad to me. That that is my dad. He he, he raised me in and out the gym. He's like he's he a good father figure. When I when I if I get in trouble in school, I can't come to the gym. But the training, the hard part, the fight, the fight is not for real. And Lorenzo Simpson, that's, that's a little bro. He amazing. I do it. He went to the doctor and the doctor told him he'll have a hand and heart. So from there we knew he was, yeah, he, he got to be an animal. It's a lot to explain. That's how much love I got for it.
Who's the man? <laughs> we just want the best for them. The way they live, the way they're in the gym, you know. Um, we just don't deal with just boxing. We deal with their life, things going on in their life, street problems, home problems, you know, because we got kids that have different situations than normal kids that have their moms and fathers there, you know. Uh, some of them going through financial problems, some of them going through educational problems, you know. So we try to stand, you know, to help them once they let us know what's going on with them. Or sometimes we come in here and we see them down and not, you know, up to their expectation of doing what they're supposed to do. We know something is bothering them and try to open up, get them to open up to us. Um, we just had two boxes that passed. One was too violent, both of them was too violent to the streets. Um, you know, trying to keep them from going in the street. That's, that's, that's our biggest task. You know, our biggest task is that, you know, because of a uh, financial situation, the way they live at home and whatnot. Um, getting caught up for us peer pressure, you know. Uh, hopefully they come in here, to, you know, just to forget about that for that time that they're in here. I strongly believe if they can spend four hours in this gym, that's four hours we save someone's life. Where we are. We're at um, 1500 block of what year? What year? And gold. What does this block mean to you? Uh, I mean, like, the beginning of like, me growing up for real, like, okay. through the struggle. So, this is where you grew up at? Yes. Yeah. Since I was young, like, about seven, I've been in the gym. So, I haven't been, like, really out in the streets for real. Here and there, I'd be in the streets, but when it was time to go to the gym, I was the first person there. Yeah, I stayed focused. No matter what what was going on around me, I stayed focused. I knew that if, if I didn't do it, then nobody else would do it Where for they? my mother. Coach Cal was a big part that played in my life. I needed to be in the gym. Talk about some of the ones that have passed away. Tabo. Tabo, yeah. Um, he was a he was a close friend to um, my grandma. Yeah, um, I guess some some dudes try to rob him, mm -hmm. and uh, um, and he he didn't let him rob him or something, and then they shot him right where the, where the pole is, right where the pole is. And my mom watched him, my my mom watched watch his last breath. Oh yes, I lost a big brother named um, Ronald Gibbs, known as Rock. And we here, my main man, better known as Rock. First year at the 2008 Junior Olympics. You have anything to say? It is what it is, man. My man, all right. Rock, right. that's my man. He, he lived actually right down the street, like a little bit. For now, he lived out that street. And I used to go over his house, chill with his sister, him, go outside on a little park. And then when he died, I was hurt. I was hurt inside. I couldn't really do nothing. Good. Pull your hook off. Pull your hook off, you baby. Yeah, hey, bro. Let him know this is Tom County. Yeah, we yeah. from Tom City. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're punching. Uh, Rock was like a big brother. I was besides my real big brother. You know, we played a lot in and in out the gym. Had girls, you know, <laughs> <laughs> party. You know, party, yeah. Yeah, okay. but um, Rock actually, um, actually lost his life by trying to defend his sister. You know, rock, it, rock, if Rock know you, he'll defend you to the end, mm -hmm. no matter what. People was trying to kill his sister, and he came outside, started fighting, and he beat out the man, and the man stabbed him up. So he was he was dead for real, and his sister, his sister got stabbed up too. First he, he was alive at first when he got, and he died at the hospital. Luz, Luz died right down the street from the boxing gym. That's where he was from, right right on the avenue, right on Division. Died straight in his hood, right where everybody was at. And then how did you plan to honor them one day? 
putting on with my uniforms. I'll be on HBO someday, just trying to keep yelling their names out, talking about them, keep praying, keep giving them strength from them, because it helped me a couple times fighting. I just knew it, it, in the streets is nothing to play with. You could be here one day and then gone the next. So I, I use my every, like every minute of my day to try to be positive. Coach Calvin just, Coach Calvin just made it simple: is is do the right thing or do the bad thing. By the time this show airs, you will have had several pro fights. Talk about the difference in being an amateur fighter and being a pro. Fighter. I mean, the rounds getting longer, mm -hmm. and the gloves getting little. Mm -hmm. So, the, and I'm actually fighting grown men now, so right. they hitting it kind of hard. How is your life changing right now? It's changing every day. Like, I'm going out of town more. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's saying the world for real. You know, if, if you don't have confidence, you don't have nothing. Okay. So, that's been in the ring and, and just knowing. I can handle my own, mm -hmm. you feel me? So that's a, that's a lot. So one day you want to be world undisputed champion of the world. For sure, you know, it, it's going to happen. You know, it just, I just got to wait, wait my um, turn. Let's be patient. Okay, I took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs>